Working on an RC drill rig is often seen as a rite of passage for graduate geologists. So it helps to understand a little of what's going on when you turn up for your first day on the job. I'm Nick Tate and this is another video in the series of Fieldcraft for Geologists. This is the headline version for YouTube. If you want the detail on each video, go to the link below in the description. It'll only cost you a few bucks and once you're signed up you'll get all the videos that are already there, plus anything new that I shoot as I find interesting things in the field. Let's have a look at the typical tasks and responsibilities of a geologist on the rig. A logging and sampling team will usually involve a geologist and a field assistant. Megan's our geologist on site today and Tom is our field assistant. Here we go. Before you start work on a drill site, you need to do a safety induction with the drillers. RC drill rigs are large pieces of heavy machinery that push materials and engineering to the limit. If something fails and you're in the way, it'll end badly. Uh, we've got a series of high pressure hoses coming off the rig and these are a no-go zone. You, you don't go near these hoses. Everyone on the job site needs to wear a full set of PPE. The first task at a new hole is to mark out the position for the drill rig. If the hole is to be any angle other than vertical, the rig will need to be aimed in the direction of the hole. Even a small error can result in the end of the hole being a long way off target. The azimuth is usually marked by laying a tape out on the drill pad a few metres to the side of the collar. So we've lined up the hole on a 95 degree azy. So we've just used some weighted uh, calico bags with some flagging tape. Most rigs are mounted to drill from the back end of a truck. The drill will back up the truck until a bit is aimed at the collar peg and the rig is parallel to the tape. Once it's in position, double check it by sighting along the edge of the rig with your compass. Stand at least five metres away from the truck so the steel in the rig doesn't disturb your compass. Just remember, you'll be looking in the opposite direction to the drill hole. If you drill in the direction you're looking, you'll become famous for all the wrong reasons and it'll cost you a lot of beer next time you're at the pub. And if you have a magnetic pencil with you for logging, leave it in the truck. Next, the mast of the rig will be raised to the planned dip of the hole. The driller will use a dip meter on the mast to set the angle. You should check the angle with your own clinometer on the mast to make sure it's correct. Again, a small error in the inclination can result in the end of the hole being a long way off target so it needs to be set very carefully. When the rig's set up and ready to drill, survey the final start point of the hole with a handheld GPS. This is a backup in case the collar is destroyed before the high accuracy survey can be done. You can do this with the rig in position. GPS signals aren't affected by the steel in the rig. So we have a proposed hole coordinate that they set their pegging line at and then where we actually drill the hole itself, we need the real-time coordinate of that as well. Drill holes are never straight, so the orientation of the hole needs to be surveyed at regular intervals to calculate the path of the hole in 3D. The orientation measurements are taken with a downhole tool. The driller will operate the tool and read the data. It's your responsibility to record and check the results provided by the driller. When drilling's in progress, the field assistant's main task is to collect samples. You really need to have all the bags labelled and checked before the start of each day. Drillers get paid for metres drilled. If you have to stand down the rig while you write up a batch of bags, you'll become really unpopular. The drillers will mount the bags and hand them to the field assistant at the end of each metre. The field assistant also collects a sieved sample from the residue bag for the geologist to log. Standard and blank samples are added from a set that have been prepared and assayed by a certified lab. They're drilling down six metre rods and for every metre you're collecting a bag, an RC bag and a calico bag. And what I'm doing here is for collecting rock chips for the geologist to log, try and get nice and deep in and around the bag so you're not just taking the top layer. So we use the five mil sieve to collect the sample initially, and then we put it into the small kitchen sieves. 
So once you've collected the chips from the RC bags, you bring them over here and you've got to give them a wash to make them as clean as possible so that the geologist can clearly identify the minerals and the lithology. Once the hole gets underway, the main task for the geologist is to log the chips. Your setup for the sieves and the logging might look something like this. You might want to prop up the chip tray you're working off with a secondary chip tray just to give it some stability. It's raining at the moment. The markers do not work on a wet surface. They don't work on dusty surfaces. Start from left to right. If you have the lid facing you, you will flick it and you'll make your chips go everywhere. Data to log will be different for each job. So for this particular job, we're looking out for chlorite, we're looking out for silica, sericite epidote. The ore body itself, we're particularly on the lookout for the sericite uh, pyrite and silica alteration. After the chips are logged, a representative set is stored for future reference. You'll want a nice representative sample of what you're actually seeing per metre. The drillers will keep written records of drilling activity during each shift. They are known as plods. These records are used to make invoices since each activity is usually charged at a different rate. When jobs get busy, it may be many days before you're presented with a bunch of plod sheets to sign off on. So it pays to keep a, a bit of a written record. The geologist is also responsible for deciding when to terminate the hole. It's a good idea to discuss this in detail with management before the program starts and get clear guidelines for hole termination. So there you have it. RC drilling is a fast paced job with many challenges for a new geologist, but it's a very effective technique and it's widely used to explore near surface deposits, particularly in Australia. So there's a good chance you'll end up working on an RC drill site early in your career. This video should give you a head start on that job.